you don't have to put it you don't even have to put it out but it's like <laughs> let let you know stare and let you're playing for the lord out here like it's like <laughs> you know it's like we're we're watching we being our internal audience and ourself and whatever mm-hmm, it's, mm-hmm. and it's like i i i got to a point where i was like i can't stand actually to be honest i just got I got a, I made records the other way and mm-hmm. I was like something's missing. I'm mm-hmm. proud of these albums. I think they're excellent. They're my best work up to that time, but something is missing. Like I feel like my I felt like, you know, this stuff is like impressive, but I don't know if it like is something you just like put on and listen to. Now, the numbers of my Spotify would say that I'm incorrect. People are listening to it, mm-hmm. you know? But there'd be this thing that would happen at the shows, which is like, man, I know I am on the edge of my own potential here. You know, I put out this record called Modern Johnny Sings Songs in the Age of Live, mm-hmm. which was the it's sort of album, yeah. from that tour. And I filmed it. I spent all this money getting a film crew in New York. Brooklyn Steel sold out 1,800 tickets. My man was That's there. Right. I was there. <laughs> you can see my head bobbing in that video. That? I don't know, whatever, tour. Yeah, we, you're like, yeah, we had dinner, remember? Yeah, I was like, there, oh yeah, my yeah. God. We... <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 it was cool. Yeah, it was Anyway, great. I remember you were there. Okay, anyway. <laughs> maybe i don't i don't remember i don't know no, you texted me afterwards and you're like yes. i saw you bobbing okay. out there no, that's true yeah i mean okay. come on I'm, yeah go. my fro is like three feet taller than the rest yeah so yeah it's yeah a, you, exactly you don't miss it yeah well and you know when you switch the night every night it's yeah. you're just like it's like where i saw you in uh dublin it's like no it's dallas right. like <laughs> dallas yeah it's like the same people but the yeah, yeah, yeah. The background yeah. keeps changing yeah <laughs> anyway i was saying that i filmed that show recorded it Spent a bunch of money doing that. My money, of course. I'm an indie artist, so mm-hmm. all to say, I invested in making this live recording, and then the pandemic hit, and you know, I was depressed, mm. and I'm sure many people were. But I, I went through a really hard time, and I couldn't. I listened to that recording, and I was I just couldn't stand hearing it. Mm. I couldn't stand hearing my imperfections. Oh, I wow. couldn't stand it, and. And I had hired my friend who's a really talented director to like do that, you know, get the film crew, put it together. And I didn't even look at the video for a year and a half. Hmm. And I went to the woods and I had this whole other journey, you know, went inward. And then one day I'm like, I got the courage. I was like, I'm just going to like, I think I'll just watch a little bit of the video. And the video looked insane i was like wow this looks amazing and i was like man we're kind of getting it so then i'm like all right i'll just put the audio on you know and i listened to audio and whatever had happened to me in that time in between it was like dang man this rips like find me someone doing this yeah and i was like wait it's me (laughs) you know the music didn't change but you changed yeah you had that acceptance where yeah and 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 this was this was a key nugget too. Is my friend Bob Lester, who directed the um, the mo- the film Robert Lester, I know him as Bob. What can I say? Um, he's like, I there was a couple moments where I'm like, oh man, I don't really nail that. I didn't really nail that. That's a little out of tune. Mm-hmm. And he goes and he said, one, I'll never forget this. I think this is the truth. He's like, I'm paraphrasing it. But basically, he was like, when you let that be heard you're telling the the audience has this experience of realizing that you are playing at your edge Mm. and then you're going beyond it. And that is the most thrilling thing for them. And then it made me think like, wait a minute, how many times have we, we have this sort of cliche notion in music where we're like, Oh, so and so is really good. And then we're like, what about that? That person? You're like, Oh yeah, it's just like a, I don't know, you know, like virtuoso. Like, you know, boring. And you're like, wait, how could it be that a virtuoso could be boring? I've been fascinated with this for a long time because I, I generally don't agree. But do you, are you guys, you know what I'm talking about? We're like, oh, chops guy. Well, oh, I think, a chops cat. I, I think what it comes down to is, is like if they, the, the why the virtuosos can be boring is if there's no soul or feeling behind it or if it's if it feels inauthentic and they're like, oh, they can shred. It's like right. they know okay. how to play all the notes, but is there any intention behind those notes? Agreed. And I want to take a step further. I think part of our perception of whether there's intention behind the notes 
is whether we can sniff that this person is actually getting into their red zone of mm. challenge. Mm. You know? And if they just go like, and you're pretty clear that they can kind of do that for 12 hours, you're kind of like, I don't care. Right. You know, but like, but Keith Jarrett gets in his red zone. Mm-hmm. Nobody's talking about John Coltrane not getting in the red zone, right? right? What's going on there? It's like those guys live in the red zone. And it's not a chops thing at that point. It transcends it. So like Oscar Peterson, I know I'm going all jazz here, but like those happen to be the keepers of the furthest we've pushed American musical improvisation. And mm-hmm. I think um, Oscar Peterson is like, what the heck, man? It's the most incredible, like makes me cry. And it's chopsy. You don't think about the chops. You're just like, what? You just person is just playing you through the angels of, of so- of sound, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, I think that's the difference. Playing yeah. to your edge, and so playing to your edge probably includes you allowing your two or three notes that are a little bit out of tune yet totally acceptably out of tune to be heard, mm. because it also tells you that every single other note. Is in tune, baby. <laughs> this cat can really sing because he's out of tune in that one spot. You see what I mean? When I've worked with other artists, that's that's happened as well, where it's like, oh, we got to do that again. And I'm like, we're not doing it again. It's like, I got it, but it's out of tune. I'm like, I know, but it's the only place in the record. And if you don't let this happen, people are going to think we, we tuned it, mm-hmm. but we didn't. You're just that good. You know what I mean? So we've gotten to a point where the technology is so good that we're starting we're starting to have the potential to lose our own ability to perceive whether something's real or not. I mean, definitely. In recorded music. Yes. I'm not trying to come here and be like, the robots are coming. It's like, they came. <laughs> right. It's They're over. Here. Like, the, it's done. Yeah, yeah. I think now it's the beginning, you know? Like, are you going to record? Are you going to make a recording or not? Well, I think people are, are craving yeah. uh, the human connection. And because yes. we've gotten so digital, it's like however you make records, because I'm sure there's a lot of people here that will still be able to have that intention and the, the humanity, and they record everything within the box. Totally. And so it's it's not necessarily even just about like, you know, tracking live in a room with other musicians and pushing yourself into the red zone, which is important. Anyone can push themselves to the red zone with whatever their um whatever their yes, their instrument whatever their of choice tool is. is. Yeah, their tools are. Totally. And it could be a DAW. Um but I think the humanity is really what you're getting to and people are craving that. And yeah. some of the most memorable moments for everyone on any record, whether it's a Dua Lipa pop record or whether it's a Theo Katzman record, it is those those moments of imperfection where you're like, oh, that was a moment that happened real yes. in the studio and they captured it and they left it in there. Yes. And then you always remember that. Yes. Because like, oh, there's humanity there. Absolutely. How many How many records can you think of where you're like, if you know you I mean it happens even on Zeppelin records it's like there's moments where Bonham drags just a hair <laughs> it's amazing and you're like miming the fill and you're like but yeah. that one's a little slower bang it's not like the guy can't keep they didn't freaking shift it together. back the in best pro ever. tools like seven milliseconds there because they didn't right. have the opportunity <laughs> so it's I, right. I want to be clear it's not about digital versus analog it's about committing to a performance that's yeah. it capturing a performance and yes I agree you can do that in your bedroom by yourself, I will just say, for me, as soon as the red buttons, that you know, as, mm-hmm. as soon, not the red button, as soon as the opportunity to sort of like really hang out with the devil is there, yeah. I'll hang with them, you yeah. know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep them there, as yeah. in like, oh, I could edit, I could comp from 50 takes, I'll do it, you know, yeah. of course you'll do it, it's, the, it's like, but what I want to present to you guys tonight is the notion that you potentially lose your ticket to self-love when you do that. Now, you might gain, I don't know, maybe you'll hit some cultural funny bone because your stuff is totally perfect and sounds amazing and you get more money and fame. That could be true. I don't know. But you, you do have the potential to let the, the microphone and the DAW or the tape machine be the mirror and that's where this stuff gets really deep to me. I don't care if any of us make a living in music. Sorry. I don't. I do. I know. Ari does. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Myself included. I do care. Okay. 
All right, I screwed it up. <laughs> I know. No, that was good. I teed you up. You no, I do. <laughs> I do want you to make it. I do want you to make it. All right. Wow. How do I get back from that? Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> My point is that um, that that would be a second order effect, ideally, from every one of us getting you know engaging in processes that that really force us to accept ourselves and hopefully learn to love ourselves. Mm. Imagine doing that and then making a living right wow you'd be kind of like well, the happiest person to ever live 